Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and we just got a big update about Deadpool and Wolverine at Marvel CinemaCon panel, along with some news about Captain America Brave New World, Thunderbolts, Fantastic Four, maybe even Secret Wars? I'm gonna break down what was unveiled at this panel in front of the thousands of attendees. Okay, so the panel actually opened with this kind of jokey moment where Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman were basically telling the attendees to turn off their cell phones, which needs to play in front of all movie screenings right after the Nicole Kidman AMC thing. But you see Deadpool and Wolverine walking down a tunnel, and the dead Pool's like, so I heard Secret Wars is finally gonna introduce, but then a phone rings, but then Wolverine pushes Deadpool out of the frame, and he looks at us, and he says, hey bub, you're in a movie theater, turn off your f***ing phone. And then he basically just unleashes a torrent of profanity at the audience, and then Deadpool jumps back into the frame, and he says, Wolverine, hearing you talk that way made my dick vibrate. And then he finishes with this compliment to Wolverine saying, nice fourth wall break, didn't think you had it in ya. So then we got some updates about Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, and Captain America Brave New World that I will get to in a second, but First, let's explain what happened in this new Deadpool footage. It was nine minutes of footage shown exclusively to attendees that was cut by Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy just for the people here. And a lot of it incorporated footage that we saw in the trailer of like Wade's birthday party, him working at his car salesman job and then touring through the TVA and starting to suit up. But they expanded the footage so that you kind of got more context of what's going on. So it begins with Wade Wilson as a car salesman and he very much offends a family of four talking about his sexual preference. And he says that he's like officially done as a superhero he's kind of like in a midlife crisis but then he goes home and he's surprised with this birthday party this is what we saw in the super bowl trailer with everyone there and we were right to notice that there was some drama going on between him and vanessa because now he is single and there's this moment where he speaks with blind al and she wants to do coke and he says hey cocaine is the one thing feige said is off limits so this would lead to the knock at the door and the tva agents detaining him and then dragging him into the tva as we saw in the super bowl footage and then he meets matthew mcfadden as agent paradox and then basically paradox shows him footage of his past, his present, and his possible future, and that includes a shot of Thor crying over Deadpool's body. It's kind of like a recreation of the moment in Infinity War when Thor is cradling Loki's body and crying, so it's kind of parodying that moment in Loki episode one when Loki sees his possible death in the Infinity Saga timeline, but here it's Deadpool being cradled by Thor, and then Paradox says, that happens in the distant future. So while it's kind of a joke, it almost seems like that might be a confirmation for Secret Wars, that Deadpool is gonna die in some incarnation of a battle in Secret Wars, and that Thor is gonna be fighting along his side. I would love it if in Secret Wars, we get to call back to this moment and Wade dies this exact way. And then Paradox basically says that Deadpool has been chosen to save the sacred timeline from a potential looming threat. And they don't go into further detail on what that is, but we know based off of trailer footage that it is going to be Emma Corrin as Cassandra Nova, Charles Xavier, Xavier's evil twin, a Mumu Dry. That's a Shi'ar term for what she is, which is really just like kind of a, a spiritual equal that normally just kind of exists in some kind of abstract sense. But for Charles Xavier, because he has this advanced telepathy, she forms inside of the womb with him and they get to this psychic battle and Charles defeats her, but she like clings to life in the sewer and then comes back for revenge, committing a genocide of 16 million mutants on Genosha using a wild sentinel created by a master mold in Ecuador. And spoiler warning for X-Men 97, we might have just seen that in episode, but we don't know if Cassandra Nova is involved in the animated side of it. And the Deadpool just makes all these great fourth wall breaking jokes. He goes, does this mean lots of gratuitous cameos? And at one point he says, suck it, Fox. I'm going to Disneyland. Get fucked. And then this part of the scene ends with, I am the Messiah. I am Marvel Jesus, as we saw in the Super Bowl trailer. And then we see Deadpool getting suited up, as we saw in the Super Bowl trailer, with someone with like Mickey Mouse style white gloves who's slapping his butt. And we find out that the swords we see sliding into their sheaths are made of adamantium. And then after he gets suited up, we see Deadpool and Wolverine driving and kind of this road trip vibe that initially years ago Ryan Reynolds said he wrote Deadpool 3 to be just kind of a road trip comedy between these two characters and Deadpool makes one of Wolverine's yellow and blue suit saying friends don't let friends dress like they play for the Los Angeles Rams. So two big takeaways from this footage Deadpool is using swords made out of adamantium and Deadpool has some future where he will die alongside Thor and probably some battle in Secret Wars. Hey, welcome back to New Rockstars I'm Eric Voss and this is a breakdown of the trailer for Spider Chum, who shall finally answer the question of what exactly happened to all the people who just kind of like spiders, but don't have any superpowers beyond not being grossed out by how many eyes they have. Seriously, spiders have eight eyes. Isn't that wild? Most of those eyes aren't even helping with depth perception. So what are they seeing? Ultraviolet radiation? The polarization of light? Some kind of special arachnid aura that humans can't even imagine? Ah, 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 ah. Marshmallow? 
Honey? Peppermint? Oh man, this is so much better. Wait, what the hell is Spider Chum? No matter what you're talking about, if you're talking a lot, One Shot Energy's voice drops can be the relief your throat needs. Go to oneshotenergy.com slash new rockstars to get 10% off your order. Okay, for some of the other footage that we saw, there was actually some footage shown for Captain America Brave New World in which Anthony Mackie came out and it was described by Kevin Feige as something similar to the vibe of the Winter Soldier. And attendees said that that was the vibe, that was the sense that they got from this footage. It was described as a relatively grounded action thriller. And the clip included a shot of Harry Harrison Ford as Thunderbolt Ross signaling that he wanted to restart the Avengers but disagreeing with Sam Wilson and he said quote just do your job you're not Steve Rogers Ooh, Thunderbolt Ross you asshole apparently Sam and Joaquin Torres had gone on a mission and it was like a mission accomplished the president started being proud before he said just do your job and then Isaiah Bradley also shows up in this footage possessed in kind of a winter soldier brainwash effect he tosses Sam he tosses a table at people he shoots world leaders he even jumps out a window to flee it looks great and speaking of thunderbolts kevin feige did briefly touch on the thunderbolts film and he pointed out the new title which did include the asterisk as we saw in florence Pugh's set footage that i did a breakdown of and he said that the asterisk was intentional and he said that they won't talk more about it until after the movie comes out so i kind of feel like the title of the movie may change or may clarify from thunderbolts to like dark avengers or like winter avengers or something like that and then there was a brief clip of uh, florence Pugh from the set of thunderbolts while eating some mac and cheese we also got a bit of an announcement for the Fantastic Four film. It's going to be shooting a little bit later this year and that they're going to be shooting it with IMAX in mind. And I recently did a video breaking down that poster for the Human Torch that was released on 4-4 day that showed in the corner what looks like the alternate reality 60s retro futurist landscape of Manhattan that they're going to be operating out of. And I made a prediction in that video that anytime Marvel Studios or any of these other world builders show us this bright, illustrious utopia that they always intend on tearing it down like a Tower of Babel. And I feel like they're setting up this alternate reality so that Galactus can eat it. Of the five comic book issues that they told us to read based off of that poster and the QR code that was on Herbie was the whole Galactus arc where the Watcher shows up and warns them that Silver Surfer is scoping him out and tries to create a distraction and it doesn't work. Silver Surfer goes on top of the backs of their building, sends off a beacon to Galactus. Galactus shows up on Ta-2, his giant spacecraft, to absorb the life force of Earth and leave it as a husk. But Reed thankfully goes out to deep space and finds the great to nullify and uses that as leverage to tell Galactus to back off. We just saw the Watcher in the recent episode of X-Men 97. I feel like Jeffrey Wright's gonna have a lot to do in the multiverse saga of the MCU. Okay, there's gonna be more to talk about from this panel in the days ahead, but I wanna thank attendees Brandon Davis, Aaron Couch, and Eric Davis for their reporting on what we saw at the event. Be sure to subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. Follow me at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.